Let's look at an example problem where we want to use the idea of specific heat and the idea of latent heat to calculate an equilibrium temperature for uh, a process where there is a phase change. So our problem is an 89 gram ice cube at 0 degrees Celsius is placed in 664 grams of water originally at 20 degrees Celsius. We want to figure out what the final temperature of the mixture will be once they come to equilibrium. So let's look at what we know. Well, starting out, the temperature of the water is greater than the temperature of the ice, so we know that water will transfer energy to the ice. This is going to warm the ice up. Ice melts at zero degrees Celsius, so we know there will be a phase change. As soon as the water starts transferring energy to the ice, the ice is going to start melting. Uh, so since we know the melting point of ice is zero degrees Celsius, and that's our starting temperature, we know there's a phase change, which means we know we're going to have to think about latent heat. So here's the equation that we want to set up. Uh, and really this is our usual equation. We're saying that the heat gained by the ice is the same as the heat lost by the water. Uh, for the water, the water won't have a phase change. This is our normal mass of water times the specific heat of water times the change in temperature, final temperature minus initial temperature. For the heat gained by the ice, there's going to be two pieces now. There's a piece that causes the ice to melt, which is the mass of the ice times the latent heat of fusion for ice or water, uh, it's the same thing, plus the amount of heat that goes into changing the temperature of the ice once it's melted. So we take our mass of ice that has now been melted. Since it's melted, it's the specific heat of water that we care about times the change in temperature. So the fact that we have a phase change uh, is represented by this term on the left here with the latent heat of fusion. So let's try and do some math. So plugging some numbers into this equation, we have 89 grams or 0 0.089 kilograms of ice. Uh, if we look up online or in the textbook, we get that the latent heat of fusion for water is 3.33 times 10 to the 5 joules per kilogram. We have, again, our mass of ice, except now it has melted and turned into water. So we use the specific heat of water, 4,186 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius, times the change in temperature. All of that is equal to the mass of water, uh, 0.664 kilograms, times the specific heat of water, times the change in temperature of the water. So we do a little bit of algebra, crank through the numbers, and we come up with a final temperature of 8.22 degrees Celsius. So we drop this ice cube into our bucket of water and that ice cube is going to cool down the water. In the process all of the ice is going to end up melting and we will be left with a cup of just water uh, at a temperature of 8.22 degrees Celsius. Notice here even though we have a lot of water that we start with the temperature does change appreciably. It goes from 20 degrees down to 8.22 degrees Celsius. And the reason is that the latent heat of fusion is really big. Right? It takes 30,000 joules to melt one kilogram of ice. And so anytime you have a phase change, that's definitely going to have a large impact on uh, your equilibrium temperature because it takes so much energy to change phase, whether that's boiling or melting. Uh, so that is how we would do this problem. Uh, one other thing to notice up here for our Q ice side, once the ice melted, it was the specific heat of water we wanted to use. Ice does have a different specific heat, uh, so this is a mistake you could make if you use the wrong specific heat here. Uh, let's real quick take one more look at a slightly different problem that would use the same concepts. Uh, a different question that we could ask is let's start with lots of ice and only a little water. So let's add 25 grams of water at 15 degrees Celsius to a glass containing 100 grams of ice at 0 degrees Celsius. This time I'll tell you that not all of the ice melts and we want to know how much ice does melt before the water and the ice reach equilibrium. 
So we know they reach equilibrium. That should tell us something about the final temperature of water compared to the final temperature of ice. Not all the ice melts, so we should know what the final temperature of the ice is from that information. And so what we're going to end up having is an equation like this, except the ice isn't going to end up changing temperature. It's just going to melt. And if you go through the math, you should figure out that about 4.7 grams of ice melts before the water and ice reach equilibrium at zero degrees Celsius. Uh, and so what would happen here is you would be left with a glass containing both water and ice, and the water and the ice would both have a temperature of zero degrees Celsius.